I'm Eileen. And I'm Ava, and welcome to the Harping Around blog. Now, what you just heard was our winning jingle for our jingle contest for the vlog. Our winning jingle was composed by Benjamin Barker. Congratulations. We met with our special guests for this episode on separate days, and unfortunately, there were some technical difficulties, so this episode might look a little different at times, but after this, everything should be back to normal. So in today's episode, we are focusing on polishing pieces, we invited two guests on to give some advice. So whether you're preparing for a recital, concert, or competition, we hope you can learn something that will help you in your practicing. So I'm here with Abigail Kent, who was recently appointed principal harpist for the Hilton Head Symphony and frequently plays with many other top orchestras. She has competed, won, and placed in many prestigious competitions, and notably, she is the winner of the 2017 AHS National Competition in the Young Professional Division, which made her the concert artist from 2017 to 2019. She has studied at and holds degrees from the Royal Academy of Music, Curtis Institute of Music, Manus School of Music, and the Juilliard School. She is also an avid teacher and pioneer of new music. So thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. So with all of your experience, how do you personally go about like polishing a piece? Uh, it depends what shape the piece is in um, when I get it. Sometimes when I'm bringing back pieces that I've known and played for a long time, that process is gonna be very different than bringing up uh, a new piece. Um, and obviously it also depends what the context is. If I'm polishing it for a concert versus a competition versus I don't know, any sort of other uh, creative avenue. Um, but if we're talking about, we're talking about competition specifically here. So I'm going to go back to sort of my, my method when I was uh, preparing for competitions, especially like AHS. Yeah. Um, I remember doing a lot of small performances of the repertoire that I was doing so that I would have some opportunities to sort of flesh out the, the little cobwebs or the little things that would come up, all of the little um, difficult spots, some memory things might come up. Um, so I would definitely like try it out in the wild, so to speak, um, in a performance setting, which granted is gonna be different than a competition, but definitely doing a lot of performances. And I also did a lot of recording of myself, like doing practice competitions. So I would just be in my room. I would either have, I think I had a dictaphone at the time. So like just a, an audio recorder. Um, I've also started using my phone um, with video, depending on if like my face is gonna be seen, um, just to make sure that I'm not doing any like super weird movements that I don't wanna do. Um, so I would, record myself with either one of the pieces or the whole program and I would listen back thinking of myself as someone not that was not myself as if I was in like the third person uh, pretending like I was the judge um, and sort of seeing what I could get from that and often I would make sure that I had lessons with my regular teachers and occasionally if I had an opportunity to get lessons with visiting teachers or someone else that would help me get a lot of different ideas about how to go about um, either fingering or pedals or interpretation or different practice techniques. Um, so different uh, perspectives can also just give you a lot of ideas on how to prepare and present uh, the music to give it sort of your own stamp uh, using all the different things that you choose to bring to the music. So how, what would you think is like the most important part of like polishing your piece or is like for people who are not as familiar with, with like what polishing a piece even means, like what would you say to that? Yeah, so I think there's a couple of things that go into polishing a piece. There's obviously um, having the technical facility uh, to be able to play all of the notes that you need to. And there are many different techniques, and I can mention a few of those that, you know, can help with making difficult things easier um, so that you're able to play through all of the notes um, at whatever tempo you choose to take uh, a piece at. Um, there's also going to be 
um, in many competitions, especially for harp um, that's solo, there's the issue of memory. And uh, most of the pieces that we play in competition uh, are either encouraged or they are required to be memorized. Mm -hmm. And often that can be a bit of a, a challenge for people. Memory has always come very easily to me. Um, but I've also gotten a lot of different approaches as to how to approach memory and uh, reinforce memory um, when pieces are difficult. Um, so we have the technical facility, we have the memory, and there's also the, the mental psychological um, aspect of, I still think of this as polishing a piece because when you present um, a piece in a competition, all of these things are at play. You know, you have to play the notes. You have to know where your fingers go. They have to like be comfortable playing the notes. Um, you have to remember what notes you're supposed to play. And your mindset has also got to be there in order to put yourself your best foot forward. Um, and that means everyone gets some sort of nerves or like heightened awareness of I'm playing for people, people are watching me. Um, but the more you can try and um, use that energy to your advantage, it is possible. Um, and it is actually can sometimes help you play even better. So, yeah. Yeah, so focusing a little bit more on like the technical aspect, what do you think is like the most helpful way to practice like a piece when you're getting it sort of like up to tempo and like sort of working on like the finer details? Mm. For me, I tend to try to play through the whole piece first, just to get an overall view of like, where are the difficult spots? Because if you start at the beginning and you practice the beginning a lot, and you're like, oh, okay, so this is fine. And, you know, I'm feeling comfortable. And then you start learning the middle part and often the middle part or like towards the end of the middle is really hard. And now you've like really got this beginning, but then the middle is just super, super challenging. So the more you can sort of at least try to read through the whole thing, um, or at least know where the difficult spots are to really hone in on that. Um, I will off, I often find that um, for a harpist, there's a lot of this jumping thing. We have we're moving and changing positions um, quite a bit. So often I will work with my students to really take a segment where there's a lot of jumping or there's a big jump that's causing some issues. And we just slow it down, but the movement from one position to the other is really, really fast. So if it was like four, three, two, one, and then you jump and play four, three, two, one, you play four, three, two, one, jump, four, three, two, one. And you can also do that with your eyes closed. So you can either play them all together and then place and play them all together, but your eyes are closed and going back and forth between those two so you can feel and that you can almost have this like, it's even more than muscle memory. It's like almost uh, like distance in where things are kind of memory. So that when you are looking, it's just an added extra little bit of information. Yeah, and also when we're looking at something that's really technical in terms of like lots of notes, like a lot of 16th notes or something like that, I will implement like a lot of different um, rhythmic uh, exercises. So sometimes that's long, short, long, short, long, and the opposite, short, long, short, long, short, long. I will do groups of three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And so the groups of notes are going to be really fast, but the time in between them is slow. And it's almost a similar thing as the the jumping. Yeah. So so finding the spots where you need to add the fast movement, but slow it down so that you can really refine it so that when you bring it up to tempo, it's already there and it's very clean and very natural. And I'm just like curious personally for you, like how long does the polishing like period of time take like in comparison to like learning the whole piece, I guess? Yeah. So yeah, so when you have like, you've learned a piece, you've kind of got it under your fingers and then you're just like 
putting the special sauce on it. Um, I mean, for me, that's the most exciting part of practicing. It's not learning the piece. It's actually implementing like all these little special things that either only I knew about or that I'm going to share with the committee. That's very much, you know, my own, my own uh, personality um, with this piece. So I'm trying to think like how, when I was preparing for AHS, um, I did not prepare all of the pieces as early as I generally would. So I did a lot of like really quickly bringing up these pieces to be able to play them. And then there was a very intense period of polishing for about, I'd say a month or so. Um, generally, I like to be able to do a bit more than a month. Two months is really nice. Um, but also being a professional musician, I'm busy running from one thing to another. So now if I have a month, that's great. If I'm like focused solely on it, that's a lot of time. Uh, so it really just uh, depends. But I think, yeah, about, a, I think if you're doing a big competition, um, and the more recent like competitions that, you know, I've experienced or I've, I've worked with students, you know, I encourage them to like prepare and be able to start polishing at least two months before, if they can, like that's the start of the polishing process so that you can put that polish under fire with like the performances or your recording or your teacher is going to like try and distract you and be, you know, kind of annoying to help you with distractions that might be in the competition. Okay. And then, so for like the memory aspect, would you, do you do a lot of like mental memory things or is it mainly just like relying on like muscle memory or? Yeah, so I have, there are a lot of different things that I do. I have obviously the muscle memory, I learned the piece and then similar to like that jumping thing, I have all of these physical aspects of memory. And that comes with playing a piece uh, and sort of dissecting, practicing a piece a lot of times. That's even what the, you know, the rhythmic practice is going to be. It's really reinforcing where your fingers go and how they move. So definitely there is a very solid foundation of uh, physical muscle memory. And on top of that, I also am a very visual person, but I think this also is, uh, can be helpful for people who are not necessarily visually, uh, that's not necessarily the thing, is I visualize, I can picture the page of music. And I can, and I've always been able to do this. I just like, I see it, you know, and it, it's really hard if I have like a different edition in front of me, because it's like, I didn't memorize this piece. <laughs> so um but yeah I can see where the glissando is and that second line you know and that can sometimes help not necessarily if you have a memory slip in the moment per se but it helps just uh reinforce you know uh, the memory in general and there's also an auditory aspect like an aural, like through the ears, you can hear where things are going from hearing it enough. And then you sort of like know either where the melody is going or what the harmony is doing. Um, there's also a bit of like understanding the music theory behind it. Sometimes I will, sometimes I will analyze it or like roughly analyze it, or at least look at what the left hand's doing. Um, and if I can't figure out what, how to memorize the piece, like I can't figure out the pattern Usually there's a pattern when there's music or there is like something that's different from the pattern. So, and that's how I generally memorize is through patterns. And so if I see something and I can see that this is a C minor chord, this is a G mi major chord, that's the minor one going to the five, uh, then that's just going to be in my head. And I don't really have to think about C and then G, it's like, oh, tonic going to dominant. And that's a very typical uh, sort of musical theory thing. <laughs> um, so I'm a musical theory nerd. Like I'm sure there are other people out there who are as well. So use it to your advantage. <laughs> um, yeah. And one more thing that is 
really crucial is uh, pedal points or, uh, you know, check-ins with like pedal markings, having a lot of different places where you know what the pedals are. You should know what your pedals are at any point in the piece. But that's really hard if you have like a thousand measures in a piece, you know, or a couple hundred even. So having a lot of little like lamppost markings of what the pedals are, being able to start at that spot cold, just knowing what the pedals are and what the notes are there um, is going to be really helpful for any tiny bit of memory uh, issue to just like skip forward and reset. Yeah, that is a great piece of advice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So sort of to close us off, do you have any like advice for any harpists who are preparing for competitions or like concerts or anything else in like their practice? I think it's important to understand why you're doing this, because if you understand why you're doing a competition, then the work sort of does itself. For me, I enjoy having a goal and also sharing music with others. And so when I'm preparing for competitions, I try to focus not so much on the competition aspect and more so on creating music and figuring out how can I best um, communicate what I'm trying to, to say through this music. And sometimes I'll have uh, like keywords at the beginning of each piece and I'll just like remember that keyword right before I play. Um, so that's something that I, is a, more recent thing that I've done, but even before then I would have like sort of an idea of the general vibe of the piece before I started. So being able to sort of bring a realness of this is music um, and competitions, you, you never know what's gonna happen. Like you can prepare a lot, you can, you know, get nervous on stage and things can happen. Um, but if you, are preparing as much as you can and you bring yourself your best self at the, that moment on stage the judges are going to have their own opinions so putting it in perspective is really important that you know everyone's going to have their own uh, view of like how that person played or how they liked that at the end of the day we're all playing music and it's a very subjective thing so Knowing that competitions are really important uh, for, they can be important for like personal development and for growth and as a goal, but they are not the, the end of making music. The point of making music and doing music competitions is to make music. Yeah. Thank you so much for speaking with me today. I hope all of you listening found it helpful whether you're preparing for a recital, concert, or even the upcoming American Harp Society National Competition. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any suggestions, episode ideas, or if you'd even like to come on and join us to talk, feel free to leave a comment or email us at harpingaround at See you next time.